Welcome back everyone, I'm Kplays Games, this is Eve Online, and as you can probably tell since I'm sitting inside my egg, it's time for another ship fitting guide. And instead of doing a random ship, we've had another request, and this request has been for a Galente battlecruiser for level 3 missions. Now, we only just did a Galente battleship for level 4 missions, and that was a drone boat in the shape of a Dominix. And if we were to do a drone boat for level 3 missions, it would be a Myrmidon, and the fit would essentially be exactly the same as the Dominix, only using medium modules instead of large modules, so we're not going to do that. We are instead going to do a Brutix gunship. So let's open fitting window and get to work. Okay, fitting window is open. Let's have a look at the traits of the Brutix. The traits are per level of Galente battlecruiser skill, 10% bonus to medium hybrid turret damage. Now 10% is pretty damn big. So if you have Galente Battlecruiser level five, you will be getting an extra 50% damage, which is brilliant. And a 7.5% bonus to armor repairer amount. This is per level. So it's obviously going to be a gunship and it's going to be armor tanked. Roll bonus, it can use a command burst module. 25% bonus to medium hybrid turret, optimal range and fall off. So it's going to be rail guns. So we're going to start with the low slots and we're going to have a look at the tank first, I think. Armor repairers, medium. We'll do a tech two medium armor repairer. Change this to say repair rate, 56.2 hit points a second. That's fine. Then we'll do our usual. We'll come up here to armor hardeners, put a reactive armor hardener on because we love them. And then we'll maybe do something like a multi-spectrum energized membrane. So the resistances are pretty good and as we know the reactive will make them better. It will take the 15 points it's spread over all four and concentrate it into 30 points on the two damages you're being shot with. Or if you're only being shot with one it will move all 60 points to that one resist. So they're really cool. The last three low slots are just going to be magnetic field stabilizers to increase the damage of our weapons when we fit the weapons. Let's have a look. Right, three of them uh, is the low slots done. Simple pimple. Okay, we only have four mid slots to play with. There's not very many, so we're going to have to be quite choosy. We're going to do a afterburner. I don't think we need to be running around at silly speeds with a micro watt drive. This is going to be a long range gunship after all. And we're going to do a large compact cap battery. Boom, cap stable straight away. Great, but as we're going to be using rail guns, that probably will not be cap stable anymore. And the third mid slot we're going to do is a tracking computer, just to help our weapons get even better. Now we'll leave the fourth mid slot open at the minute, and we'll leave all the rigs open at the minute, and we'll concentrate on the high slots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven high slots, then six turret hard points, so that's quite cool. We have a utility high slot that we can use. So let's go to hybrid turrets, rail guns, medium. Let's see if we can fit a full rack of six 250 millimeter guns. Not quite. We could, if we use a power rig, I think. Let's have a look. Rigs, engineering, medium engineering. It would have to be a, no, not quite. We could do it if we did two power rigs, but I'm not sure if I want to do two power rigs just to fit these bigger guns. You could probably get better performance by fitting slightly smaller guns and then using the rigs to boost the performance of those smaller guns. So that's what we're going to go and do. Hybrid turrets, medium, scroll all the way down. Let's fit six 200 millimeter guns. And even these are pushing the power grid. So we are going to need one power rig but only a tech one, and only one of them. Medium engineering rigs, ancillary current router one, there we are, done. Charges wise, obviously we want antimatter for the maximum damage. We'll drag some of that into cargo. Lead is the medium range, medium damage one, so we'll have some of that as well. I wouldn't really bother with javelin or spike or faction ammo for missions, especially not in level 3. 
So with antimatter, we're getting 561 DPS out to a range of 18 and a fall off of 36. It's not great, it's not terrible. What we will do then is that we will fill our final mid slot with a second tracking computer, like so. So if we need to, we can put two optimal scripts in this and push the range all the way out to 48, which is still not huge. With lead it goes all the way out to 69, our targeting range is 75. But usually you would do one tracking and one optimal range. You do it like this because if you run the two computers empty, they'll stack and penalize each other because both of them are doing fall off bonus and optimal and tracking. So this one here will only be getting 85% of these bonuses. It will not be getting 100% because it's stacking penalizing the other one. So if you put one optimal range script and one tracking speed script, you'll now see that this is only doing fall off bonus and optimal range, and this is only doing tracking speed. So they are no longer stacking penalizing each other. So you get the full bonus from each of them. That's quite a handy little tip. Okay, let's go back to antimatter charge M. We do have a drone bay and we can use up to five medium drones and we have enough drone bay space for that. So let's indeed put five medium drones in. We'll put five lights in as well. That's the five hammerheads. And just to be lazy, we'll put five hobbit goblins in as well. So let's put the offense up to 720. See 158 from the drones and 561 from the guns. That's pretty cool. Now we've got two more rig slots to play with. Let's have a look. I think we should probably do at least one kind of capacitor rig. No, perhaps. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to have a look at hybrid weapon rigs first. What have we got right? Well, we could just do that, but then the cap's going to be really quite poor. So I think we'll do a Tech 1 hybrid weapon damage rig and then see what we can do with the remaining calibration. Let's glance at the DPS, see which one does more. Well, the burst aerator gives us like 0.5 more DPS, but it harms a capacitor more because it's actually speeding up the cycle time of our weapons. So instead we'll do a collision accelerator which just increases the damage per hit. So we'll do that. Then we'll go up here and filter this by remaining resources and then select rig and subsystem slots. And this restricts everything to what we can actually fit. And if we click this, it will remove all the small and large. So all we are left with now is a list of all the rigs that can fit on the ship with the remaining calibration we have. Okay, we do actually have enough space to do a cap rig, that's pretty good. This one puts up the cap to 12 minutes 27, this one does it 12.45. 45. 45 is more than 27, so we'll do that. That's where using the filters can really help you with your fits. So I think this is the fit we're going to go with. It's not the fastest, but 500 meters a second should be good enough for level 3 missions. It's got plenty of hit points, it's got decent enough repair. Cap lasts half an hour if you turn the afterburner off, or you, you might not need to use the armor repairer all the time. DPS is 736. Fall off range is 40 with high damage antimatter, that's fairly respectable for these kind of missions. We do have one high slot left, so let's investigate this. Filter by remaining resources, and filter it by the high power slot. And filter it by things that can be fitted to this ship. Our targeting is 75, so we could put a drone link augmenter just to give our drone control range a boost from 60 up to 80, which would be fairly good, but then that's further out than our guns can reach, so maybe we won't do that. I'm not sure why it's saying we can use that, because there's no more slots free. That's where the filter has gone wrong. Smart bombs, you don't do these in high sec, you'll get yourself killed. Don't think we need any of this, or any of that, or any of these. 
I suppose you could try and put a Nosferatu on. Because what these do, these will leech capacitor even from NPC ships and add it to your own. So what you do, you would leave one little enemy frigate that's orbiting you close, leave that alive and just turn this on and constantly transfer capacitor's energy from that NPC ship to yourself, which would indeed make it camp stable. It's kind of niche. You don't, you don't always find NPC frigates willing to help you in that manner. So I think we'll just do an automated targeting system. We can actually get a Tech 2 one on. All this is going to do for us is increase the maximum lock targets from 7 to 10. You never actually turn this on, you just have it fitted and online, but you don't actually turn it on because you don't want it to target things that it picks. You want to target things that you want to target, but we can now target up to 10 things. So I think this is the fit we're going to go with. 736 DPS out to a range of 40 kilometers. That will destroy almost any L3 mission in the game. Oh. Wow, okay, we're actually cap stable with lead ammunition, that's good. And that actually goes out all the way to 60, which is where our drones can go. So let's just investigate how high we can get our damage and still be cap stable. Not iridium. Not plutonium. Not thorium. Not thorium's kind of a happy medium. 591 DPS, fall off range 54, cap last 47 minutes, otherwise known as effectively cap stable for missions. It's 50 more DPS than lead. It's only 5 kilometers less, so we'll delete lead from the cargo. We're not going to use lead, we're going to use thorium as our longer range ammo. Okay, decision made. This is what we're doing. So I'm going to save the fit and then we're going to go and buy it and then we're going to go and run some level 3 missions together. Okay, here is our beautiful new Brutex. I do like the way this ship looks. It looks absolutely brilliant. Big chunky body, little tiny stubby wings at the back. A million rockets out the rear end. It looks great. Now, in PvP, a Brutex would be fitted with neutron blasters, two webs, micro warp drive, all that kind of jazz. But as this is PvE, we've gone long range. It's a great looking ship. So let's see if we can ding up the paintwork a little bit, shall we? Let's talk to the agent. And we've been offered a mission called Retribution. It's in this system. Objective, destroy the Serpent site post, then report back to the agent. 192,000 disc plus another 200,000 if we do it within two hours. So we're actually getting paid more bonus than we are for doing the mission itself. And a measly 721 loyalty points. The pay for level three missions is laughable. Let's just accept it and get on with this, shall we? Let's go. Warp drive active. I have loaded one optimal range script and one tracking script. I don't have any more scripts in cargo. Here we are at the mission site in our beautiful new Brutex. Engines all aglow. I didn't bring any more tracking scripts, so if we need more tracking, we'll just unload the optimal range one. And if we need more range, we'll simply unload the tracking one. So we don't have... If you want to, feel free to carry another tracking speed script and another optimal range script. So you can double up. I'm not sure why you would ever need that, but you can. Warp drive. Active. I'm just going to start off with a high damage ammo and hope that everything is within 40 kilometers. Let's see what's in here. Quite a lot of bad guys. Cool, we like that. Are they within 40? Kinda. Right, we'll just drag a box around these, target them and destroy them. I'm not going to bother grouping the guns because I kind of want to see how they act independently. Yeah, that's not bad. That's pretty good. you got to like that, haven't you? There you go. One frigate dead. Two frigates dead. One cruiser about to die. 
one cruiser dead. Good stuff, we like that. And I think we'll just target all these frigates up here, which aren't quite within 40 kilometers. So what we'll do, we'll just reload. This is the best thing, well, one of the best things about hybrids is that they only reload in five seconds, so switching ammo types is easy. And the time it's taken for me to say that, it's reloaded. Let's just put one gun on each frigate and watch them all die. Jolly good show, chaps. That's how we like to do it. And then I think we'll kill all these guys down here. Easy peasy, isn't it? And we have taken... 3% shield damage so far in this mission because we're just smashing everything from long range. You'll notice we haven't actually moved at all since we warped into this site. We've just sat still and killed everything. Oh, I suppose we'd better move a little bit closer to these guys. Right, let's go. I'm going to turn the armor repairer off. All it's doing at the minute is wasting capacitor. Didn't even bother to put my drones out either. Suppose we should. Alright, drones go and kill these frigates. Or they will once they get into range. Range of Thorium is 50. 4. Go drones, go. As soon as we get within 54 of the battle cruiser, we'll open up on them and have ourselves a Brutix duel, which we will win. I suppose we better right-click on the Serpentus outpost and lock target here. Oh, it's down here. Okay, that guy's dead. The frigates haven't noticed what's going on because they're a bit stupid. Let's just approach the Serpentus outpost. We're going to reload to antimatter so we can kill it really quickly. Drones have killed another frigate. And the range of these is 40, so let's just start shooting at the outpost right now. Oh, that's another frigate dead. And the drones will kill the last frigate. And if this thing survives long enough, we'll bring the drones back. No, nope. oh well, I was going to bring the light drones back and put out the mediums, but um, we didn't need to. Right, that's that mission done. We'll just reload with more antimatter. Right, let's go and get another mission. Bob drive active. Okay, we have another mission called the Black Market Hub. It's three jumps away. We're being tasked with destroying a bestore. So there will be an... It will be a ship, it will be a piece of scenery we need to destroy. Grab some sealed cargo containers, bring them back. 319,000 isk for doing it. 461 for doing it within three and a half hours. 1,287 loyalty points, so let's accept and go and do this. Web drive active. Here yeah, we've made the three jumps. We're on the way to the mission. We'll just leave everything as it is. Turn everything on. We won't turn the, arm the armor repairer on until we actually start taking armor damage. There's no point. Never get tired of looking at Brutix. And indeed, most Calenti ships, some people say they're ugly. I like them. Especially with the new shaders we just got for reflections. Look at that, with the nebula reflecting off it. It's amazing. Web drive active. Some opening blur, blah, blah, blah. 
Who cares? Mercenaries, they'll all drop things. They're at a decent range, so what we're going to do, we're going to reload the thorium and we're going to unload the tracking script. No, we're not. We're going to reload to antimatter and keep the tracking script on because more bad guys have just spawned right up in our face. Uh, actually, no. I am going to do what I was going to do originally. We will let our drones kill all this stuff. So, unload the tracking computer, turn it back on, and all of a sudden our thorium can now reach out to 59 instead of 54. That's great, that means we can smash these missile batteries. And we'll turn the armour rep on. We go, the drones have killed the two frigates that are right up in our face. We are working away in the missile batteries. We've actually had, had to turn on the armour rep in this mission. If I could be bothered, this would be a mission that is worth salvaging and looting because every single one of these ships is going to drop at least something. And sometimes that can be expensive Meta 4 missile modules, especially from all the cruisers because there are quite a lot of cruisers here. Three, six, nine in this first room alone. You drones have killed the cruiser. That cruiser's dead. Let's just reload to antimatter now because the other ones are closing range. And antimatter now reaches out to 44, which is just about where these guys are. And then we'll reload the thorium, aggro this lot up here. In fact, if the drones... yeah, I think we'll let the drones kill this one here. After they've finished that one, we'll just reload the thorium and start working on their next group immediately. Right, he's dead. Drones, go and kill him. And then we'll start working on this lot. Yeah, we're missing quite a lot because it is actually outside our fall off range, but we're hitting it often enough to destroy it. Sure, we need to kill the other missile battery. We'll just untarget lock it. But I'm not even sure we need to kill that one. So I'll stop firing at it. And we'll just smash the cruisers instead. If I could be bothered, I'd turn on the afterburner and actually get closer to these things, but I'm being lazy today, so I, I'm not going to do that. Alright, room one clear. Let's just get to the gate, bring the drones back and go through. I'm not going to bother looting this, but I think you probably should. As I said, nine mercenary cruiser wrecks could have quite a lot of decent loot inside them. Active. More opening blurb. And I think we'll replace the tracking speed script in this, just in case everything's up close. There we are. Easily done. Okay, how close are we? Look to be quite close. That's just perfect. Absolutely perfect. Right, let's lock everything up. Yep, 
let's smash the cruisers, put out the drones. The drones can go and kill these frigates. Light drones this time against frigates. One cruiser dead. One frigate dead. That's the second cruiser down. Bring the light drones back. Let's try this. Okay, now this mission can confuse people because it says you need to get these cargo containers in your cargo hold. And the only thing we have are wrecks and cargo cans from the two towers we've destroyed. And if we look over here, and if we read the mission journal, we were told to look out for an NPC bestower, blow it up, and get the cargo. And look at what we have here. This little thing that doesn't show up, if you right-click on it, it's only a large collidable structure. So it's not an overseer's thing that would appear in your overview. It's not a ship itself, it's a little bit of scenery, and it's hidden all the way at the back here. We just approach the shipyard, put a couple of rounds in this, there it goes, pop, and this is now the cargo container we need. I mean that bestower really should be changed to an overseer's structure so it actually appears on a normal overview. It was a large collidable structure, and if, if we have a look, Everything here is a large collidable structure, so let's add them to overview. Yeah, and that's what you get if you turn them all on. You've got to try and find a bestower somewhere in this big long list of nonsense. But we didn't have to do that. We knew what we were doing, so let's just open this cargo box and go and hand the mission in. There we are. That's the things we need. Right, well, let's go. Warp drive active. All right, so that was two missions in a brand new Brutex. I think the fit worked rather well. We were never in any danger. I mean, battle cruisers and level three missions, they're kind of well, level three missions were kind of designed for battle cruisers, but that was 15 years ago. Battle cruisers are very different beasts now, because over the, the last 15 years, missions have not been updated at all, and ships and modules very much have. The power creep is real. But that is how I would fit a Brutex for level 3 missions. Hope you found this video good fun, I certainly had good fun with it, and I hope we all meet again for the next one. Until then, do take very good care of yourselves, I'll talk to you again soon.